quiz. Welcome to Hearts Triple Play on Facebook. The quiz is going to be starting very, very soon. So quickly get all your friends onto the Facebook app to play. Hurry up. Just 10 multiple choice questions stand between you and a share of today's cash prize. We're turning up the feel good on Hearts. Just what? 30,000 pounds! Yeah. So just dance, dance, dance. Across the UK, turn up the feel good. Yeah, Welcome to Hearts Triple Play on Facebook. The quiz is going to be starting in three minutes. So get all your friends on the Facebook app to play. Just 10 multiple choice questions stand between you and a share of today's cash prize. We're turning up the feel good on Hearts. Sam, yeah. you just won. 30,000 pounds! Across the UK, turn up the feel good. This is heart. Welcome to Hearts Triple Play on Facebook. The quiz will be starting in 60 seconds. Get all your friends onto the Facebook app to play. Just 10 multiple choice questions stand between you and a share of today's cash prize. Tuesday the 12th of February, welcome to Hearts Triple Play, live on Facebook, all very exciting. Now, if you didn't win big today with Hearts 30k Triple Play on the radio, don't worry, this is the game that is going to give you another chance to get your hands on some cash. Just 10 multiple choice questions stand between you and a share of today's cash pot prize, which is a whopping £1,000. Oh, 
very nice. Imagine that in your bank. Yeah, now if you get a question wrong, you can't win today's cash, but you won't be locked out of the game, so you can still play along. And you can actually help your friends because they can see your answers. So just keep on playing, try and steer your mates to victory because there could be a cheeky drink in it for you or even a Valentine's Day card is just around the corner. So today, your triple play questions are on TV heroes, celeb news, and arty things. Uh, so if there's a celeb loving art buff TV addict knocking around at work, just distract them from what they're supposed to be doing and get them to play along with you. So, as you well know, for the best playing experience, you need to be plugged in, don't want your battery dying, you want to be on the Wi-Fi and have the latest Facebook app installed. We don't want you having any glitches with the game, we just want to help you win some money. The full T's and C's for the quiz can be found on the Heart website. And remember, as soon as you see that question pop up on the screen, you'll only have 10 seconds to click on your answer and there'll be triple options to pick from. 10 questions, 10 seconds, triple options. Right, I think we're all here. Are we all excited? John, Di, Malika, I can see you. There's only one way to find out who's going to make it to the end. Good luck, everybody. It's time for Hearts Triple Play. Hearts Triple Play. Now, the actor behind this first TV hero is himself descended from royalty, while his character is East End royalty. Oh, yeah, there he is, Danny Dyer. So, for question one, I would like to know, what is the name of Danny Dyer's character in EastEnders? Mick Carter, Twisted Firestarter, Helena Bonham Carter. Yes, so what's his name? Mick Carter, Twisted Firestarter, or Helena Bonham Carter? Yeah, nay, no, hey, just when you see the name, pick it. When you've made your choice, click it. Yeah, sorry, I don't know what happened. Got possessed then. Uh, you know the song, <laughs> but do you know the answer? The answer is... Mick Carter! Yeah, Danny Dyer, bless him, he discovered actually he really is descended from royalty on Who Do You Think You Are? And it was so good, that episode. Yeah, Danny, fast on his way to national treasure status after appearing on that show. And actually, while we're on the subject, I think I've seen a pattern to obtaining national treasure status. You can either act a bit humble, have like a self-depreciating sense of humour, then start to swear like a docker at award ceremonies. That's you, Olivia Coleman, or Stephen Fry. Or you start off sweary and tough, and then go for a softer side like Danny did. So if I suddenly get a bit sweary around question seven, don't worry, I'm just making an early play for an MBE. Right, moving on from the East End of London to the furthest reaches of outer space. For the hero in question two, I'd like to know. Fish fingers and custard was a favourite food combo of which sci-fi TV hero played by Matt Smith? Doctor Who, Captain Kirk, Luke Skywalker. Oh, I mean, forget sci-fi, eh? Fish fingers and custard, that's horror. Pure, gruesome horror. And whoever invented it, Keep that recipe in the realm of science fiction, OK? I've got lunch to keep down here. OK, for those of you who aren't too grossed out to carry on playing the quiz, I can tell you that the character that enjoyed that abomination was Doctor Who. Yeah, it was also quite fond of a jammy dodger as well, which sounds much nicer, if I'm honest. Luke Skywalker's favourite food was noodles, but he could never eat them with chopsticks. He preferred to use the forks. Yeah, sorry about that one. OK, on to the next question. And this week it is actor, da actor Damien Lewis's birthday. Happy birthday, Damien. Uh, so for question three, I want to know, in which TV series did Damien Lewis play US Marine Nicholas Brody? Homes Under the Hammer, Home and Away, Homeland. Uh, any of you see Damien play Henry VIII on the beep a couple of years ago in Wolf Hall? Yeah, like a younger Henry VIII when he was a handsome and dashing lad. Not like the bearded pork pie you see in most of the portraits. Yeah, liked his food, did Henry VIII, but you know, he was king and he had a guillotine in the garage, so I suppose no one really dared to tell him he couldn't have any seconds. So, back to the answer, and it was, of course, Homeland! We were all addicted to it. Yeah, Homeland uh, was about potentially radicalised soldiers returning uh, home from combat. Uh, home and Away was about fostering children at home in Australia. And Homes Under the Hammer was about home makeovers. You know, the other one, not the one presented by Nick Knowles. Oh, now all you can think about is Nick Knowles and those red speedos. Apologies for that. Uh, so, Gerard, Julie, Lisa and Jamie, you're still in the game. 
Give me some thumbs up if you're still in. Tap those likes and smiley faces and hearts. Let's get some positivity going. Seven questions to get through to get your hands on a share of that glorious prize. So, for the next question, pay attention to the answers of any of your friends that know anything about celebs. For question four, I would like to know, which celebrity hosted the Grammy Awards on Sunday night in Los Angeles? Ariana Grande, Alicia Keys, Avril Lavigne. I can tell you one thing, it wasn't Joanna Lumley because she was here in the UK hosting the BAFTAs on the exact same night. In fact, despite singing and acting in the same movie, Bradley Cooper came to the BAFTAs and Lady Gaga went to the Grammys because they were up for awards in both of them. So there you are, you see, you know, even international megastars have to share prizes. Now, we can't promise you a shiny statue, but you could get a share of a thousand pounds. We'll work on the shiny statues. The answer is Alicia Keys. Yeah, hopefully you went for that one. I always thought that was a really great name for a Yorkshire letting agent. Alicia Keys. Uh, maybe in another life, I don't know. Uh, probably better off being an amazing singer and a musician, really. Uh, yeah, Alicia, she hosted the night and Ariana picked up an award for best pop vocal album. Avril Lavigne, still releasing albums. But I think most of us remember her from telling her, uh, that skateboarder to sling his hook. Or was it the other way around? Anyway, all water under the bridge now, skater boy. So we're four down, we're six to go. You are almost halfway to a share of that big cash prize. Chloe, Richard, Debbie, I can see you. But question five, I'd like to know. Which former eternal singer pulled out of a West End role after injuring herself earlier in 2019? Vernie Bennett, Kelly Bryan, Louise Redknapp. Yeah, Eternal, they're an R&B group back in 92. Oh, they had so many good hits in the 90s. They sold around 10 million records worldwide. They're one of my faves. Uh, get this one right, and you are halfway through the quiz, and you're on your way to winning a share of that £1,000 prize pot today. The answer was Louise Redknapp. Yeah, bless her. Had a bit of a nasty fall on her way to rehearsals for the Dolly Parton musical 9 to 5. That was back in January. She got a fractured wrist, 10 stitches in her chin. I don't know. What a way to make a living, eh? Well, we are halfway through. Wendy, Justine, Angie and Becky. Come on, girls. I can see you. For question six, let's keep going. Can you tell me? What did Tom Hardy and Charlotte Riley recently name their newborn son? Forrest? River Moss. I mean, when you think about it, they're all pretty plausible names. When you think of what other celebs call their kids, they're all very in tune with nature. They could be things that you'd see on a day trip, to the countryside, on a walk in the woods, down the fabric softener aisle at Asda. They're all nice names, aren't they? Yeah, but have you seen it somewhere? Any of those ones ring a bell? The answer is Forrest. Oh, there he is, little Tom, running and running. Life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what you're going to get, unless you are a celebrity's kid, and then it's most likely you're going to get a weird name. Now, the paper said he was allegedly named after uh, that character, Forrest Gump, although Tom did play a character called Forrest in a film called Lawless, so it could be for that reason. Either way, I actually quite like the name, do you? So, moving on from celeb to something a little more highbrow now. You might have seen this story in the news last year when a Banksy painting was sold for a million pounds at auction and then it self-destructed in front of everybody. So, for question seven, I'd like to know, what was the name of the Banksy artwork that shredded itself after being sold at auction? Graffiti is a crime, rage, flower thrower, balloon girl. Yeah, there was a shredder. It was hidden inside the frame and it was set off by remote control. Probably by Banksy himself incognito in the crowd because Banksy's actually never publicly revealed his identity. Who knows? One of you playing could secretly be Banksy. It's you, isn't it? John Smith. Far too obvious. It's not a real name. OK, the answer is Balloon Girl. Yes, there's the balloon and there's the girl. There, sorry, there shredded oh it caused hearts to stop at that moment the art was sold for over a million pounds and then it just instantly self-destructed it became instant art world history the painting was actually renamed love is in the bin and is all uh, ironically already worth double what the buyer paid for it so uh, not too bad is it so whose chances are not in the bin after seven questions anastasia jan md debbie you're doing well we're moving on now from banksy to Bean for question eight, as you do. So, in the 1997 film Bean, which famous artwork does Mr. Bean inadvertently destroy by sneezing on it? 
Girl with a Pearl Earring, Whistler's Mother, The Kiss. If you get this one right, massive well done. I won't ask if it's because you're an art buff or that you can just remember the plot of a Bean movie from 22 years ago. I'm not judging. If you get it right, either way, I'm saluting you because it's getting you very close to that cash pot prize. The answer is Whistler's Mother. Yeah, in 97, Mr Bean, he ended up wiping away a whole face using a mucky handkerchief and a leaking biro. And then he ended up drawing a smiley face on it to try and cover up his handiwork. In the end, he replaced the original with a poster. But unlike the Banksy story, this didn't result in the piece being worth more. Although, the film made $233 million profit. So it all kind of worked out in the end, didn't it? Swings and roundabouts. Uh, Lick Chung, Paul, Georgia Oliver... We're moving on to question nine. You're still in the game. So, Edvard Munch, the Scream painting, was stolen on this day, but in which year? 1992, 1993 or 1994? Yet yeah, the thieves were experienced. Their methods they used were highly technical, advanced, next level to get in that top security museum. How do they do it, you ask? Yeah, they used a ladder propped up against a window. Luckily, the painting was recovered and then the security was tightened. A ladder against an open window. I mean, even the Chuckle Brothers could have pulled that off. Ridiculous, isn't it? Well, hopefully, you got the year right. The answer was 1994. Yeah, one of the most famous paintings in the world, and I'm sure you'd all recognise it if you just Googled it. It's sort of like, uh, imagine the face you would pull if you won a grand today, but then just sort of melt your face a bit so it looks scared, like... I don't know what it looks like. Actually, ooh, can't see now. Uh, let's just see whose real face is still in the game. Who we got? Uh, Carl, Georgia, Wendy, Becky, Jack and Jill, you're still in, but it was a heartbreaker. Oh, we did lose quite a few of you on that one. Well, keep playing, see if you can help your mates out, because if you're still in, it's a big moment now. You were just one correct answer away from a share of that glorious one thousand pound prize pot there's 114 players still in the game what would you do if you got some free cash new clothes go out for a nice meal come on treat yourself on a tuesday let's make it happen it is now time for your final question final question Okay, here we go. I hope that everyone that is still in has been on lots of holidays because this city is known for its beautiful architecture and art deco buildings. Hopefully this will help. Question 10. Which South American capital city was founded on this day in 1541 by Pedro de Valdiva? Santiago, Caracas, Bogota. Yeah, anyone else celebrating a birthday today? You'd be sharing it with the likes of Abraham Lincoln, Charles Darwin, Josh Brolin, Christina Ritchie. Let me know in the comments if it is your birthday today, be honest. And then come on, should we just have like a big flurry of hearts and smileys for the birthday boys, the birthday girls, and just everybody on this last question. Come on, send them love, yes! And hearts and happy faces. Okay, well here we go. For your share of a thousand pounds, wish a very big happy 478th birthday today to the city of Santiago. Yeah, it's the capital of Chile, great place, known for its red wine, famous for the cocktail Pisco Sour. Caracas is Venezuela's capital and Bogota is in Colombia. Oh, well, this is the moment now. If you knew your stuff, well, it's very good. Shall we find out who's won? Play. Oh, very good. We've got the fireworks going. 81 winners today. Very, very good to Paul, Chevenne, Tom, Remy, Daniel, MD and Jackie, George, Ellie, Kavan. Hey, you played it well today. 12 squid in your back pocket. Not bad, is it? Get you a little drink, maybe a packet of crisps as well. Can celebrate tonight. Big congrats if you've made it. Thank you for playing again as well. I've seen some familiar faces. It's lovely to see you all. That, though, sadly, is us done for the day. So remember, if you would like the chance to win a life-changing sum of money, 30 
thousand pounds. Do make sure you're listening to Heart on the radio every weekday between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. and play our brilliant game, Hot's 30k Triple Play. I'm going to be back right here tomorrow on Facebook at 4.30 for another Hearts Triple Play. So I hope to see you there. And then tonight, I'm on the radio, as always, from 7 o'clock. So make sure you tune in, and I will see you soon. Hearts Triple Play.